My name is Joe Parks, honored to serve as campus pastor here at New Life Church Northwest. And man, we have such an incredible day. We've got communion Sunday is coming up ahead of us. And uh, you man, you heard all that stuff about the she conference. We've got all these tables, right, that are sitting out in the front, all these tables for us to go sign up. And I was thinking, like, I was talking to the staff last night, like, that table for the she conference, don't you think that should have been a she shed, right? <laughs> like, that's what, we, <laughs> that's what we should have done. And then, like, all the ladies could have come together, and they could have figured out how to make it a she she or she shed. <laughs> and then you would all go. You would all be at the conference if we had a she shed out there. And no, it's not coming to our house. Mm-mm. We've been in this series, Called Up, right? God is calling us up. He is calling us up to get into the game so that we can serve well, so we can serve well at work, so we can serve well in the home, so we can serve well at school, we can serve well here, here in our church with our church family. And so we've been exploring shape and what does that look like in our lives, that you have been created and formed and shaped by God on purpose for a purpose, you have, and God has something special designed for you. And for you to move in that is where life, you will find the most fulfillment in life, period. And so we've been looking through all of these things. And so one of the ways, other than just like here in this series, one of the ways that we can do that is through our Connect classes, right? That happen. In Connect 3, we completely unpack shape. We completely unpack that and what that looks like for you as a person and moving in what God has for you. So this fast track thing that's coming up next weekend, oh man, I cannot wait for that. We're going to put all of them together in one thing for a couple of hours. We're going to hang out together and go through it. So if you have not gone through Connect, or maybe you started it one, but you haven't made your way through it, Man, be a part of that. There's going to be food. We're going to have child care. Kathleen and I are going to be there. That should be it, right? Man, if you haven't, if you haven't been through Connect, come and join us with that, if you would. Today, we're going to take a look at the joy or the happiness, the happiness that can be found in serving others. And when I'm talking about happiness, I'm not referring to like the giddiness that you get when, you know, it's Christmas morning and you're going down to the tree, or I'm not talking about the happiness that comes when the Dallas Cowboys are dismantling whoever they're playing. Because neither one of those things are real, baby. Oh, right. I'm not talking about happiness that comes from circumstances or happiness that comes from selfishness that we tend to look and want That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this happiness that comes in you knowing Christ and knowing who you are in Christ and how he has created you. A lot of times we use the word joy, and that's what Paul does. The Apostle Paul repeatedly uses the word joy over and over again here in the book of Philippians. And so what I wanted to do, though, is I was like, let's just... Like, let's just get real for a moment, because for most of us, serving is an acquired taste. (laughs) It really is, right? Like, unless you have the gift of serving, or you have the gift of giving, or, or the gift of hospitality, for most of us, it just doesn't come naturally at all. There are these times when kind of our selfishness kicks in, and it's like, I don't want to serve other people. How about somebody else serving me for a change? Right, like that comes into our natural bent for so many of us to move in that direction. We lean towards the path of least resistance, right? That's going to give us what we think is this happiness in life. And even in that, when we look at it, we find out that there's just so temporary. And we hope and we believe that in these moments, right? Like in these in the moment, temporary pleasures that they will last for a long, long time. And they don't. They never do, and we're left disappointed when that happens. Some of you may be familiar with uh, Jamie Oliver. He is a famous chef, uh, got all kinds of TV shows, cookbooks that he has written uh, over in the UK. And basically what happened is he came up with this plan, this kind of this campaign uh, in the UK to ban unhealthy foods in all the public schools. 
And so his idea, basically, as he presented this to all the different school systems over there, was that they could serve food that was both healthy and way less expensive than what they were doing now. And it would benefit the school system and the students. It was this win-win deal. And so a number of these school systems decided that they wanted to adopt this plan. And then when they did, there was this huge public outcry. There was so many people that were upset because here's why the plan basically that was provided had all of the students having two portions of fruit a day and three portions of vegetables a day and they were kicking and screaming they wanted absolutely nothing to do with it in fact one school in south yorkshire the parents came and they went to the school during recess And they went to the back fence where they met their children. And there they handed them hamburgers and fries through the fence. I don't know why you say fries. Actually, fries for us is chips. And chips is crisp and all that fun stuff. That was really good though, right? (laughs) You guys are like sitting there like, I don't know what to do. Why did he change his voice? He has this plan, and it is designed to help everybody. It is less expensive. It would create healthier kids. It would deal with the, uh, reducing like the childhood obesity and the problems that come with that. And a lot of people, both parents and kids, fought the change. Why? Because fruits and vegetables do not bring immediate gratification like pizza and ice cream, right? <laughs> That's the deal, and that society that we live in. The truth is, though, that people that do eat healthier food, right, when you talk to them, they tend to prefer healthier foods, right? Like, maybe that didn't happen immediately. They kind of developed the habit, and now that's what they prefer to eat all the time over any of the junk food. It's a habit to develop, The same thing can be said for you and I when it comes to serving others. That it's this habit that we can develop. It's an acquired taste. So often, our natural bent, our natural tendency is to say, what can you do for me? Or, or, you know, okay, fine, I will help you out in this as long as there's some sort of mutual benefit that I get that's going to bring happiness into my life. That's our natural tendency. We really think that we'll be more happy if other people are looking out for us and and after every little want and need and whim that we have. It's basically the equivalent of relational junk food. That's what we see. And the truth is, is that most people are just not happy when they're in that state of life. And if you're looking long-term, if you're looking for the future, when we learn to give ourselves to other people in service, it is the road that is less traveled. Robert Frost, the great uh, author, poet, wrote a poem, and one of the lines in there, and I put it up on the screen for you, is he said, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. Today, we're going to talk about three ways, three ways that you can take the road less traveled on the path to a happy life. We're going to find all of that in Philippians chapter 2. Paul uses this word joy. He uses this word joy three times in just one chapter in Philippians chapter 2. And they have these kind of clues for you and I on how we can experience the fullness and the joy in our life. We want to look at these together. You guys ready for this? That was just my open. That was amazing, right? Let's get into this. What is the road less traveled on the path to true happiness? Here's the first one if you're taking notes. Find happiness in building up others. Here's what he says in verse 2. Make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. And I'm wondering, like, why would he say this phrase, make my joy complete? 
Because he's just saying, I've been your pastor. I have been your teacher, your spiritual leader, and I have poured my life into you. And nothing makes me happier than to know that you're doing well. That's what he's saying to us here. I am filled with joy because I can see that you are, and your spiritual life is on target. And that's what I want. Paul's whole reason for ministry, his whole reason for living was to build others up. His goal and his purpose in life was so people would come to know Christ and then he would help them to become these fully devoted followers of Jesus. Here's what he says in Galatians 4.19. He says, my dear children, from whom I am again in the pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you, how I wish I could be there with you. Listen, let's just break this down. You know what he's saying? He's saying, I struggled, like I really struggled to bring you the gospel so that you could know who Christ was. He goes, and now I struggle again. It's like childbirth to help you become more mature in your faith. That was the most important thing to Paul, helping them. He says, do you make my joy complete? I mean, let me ask you a question. We kind of go back to that natural tendency, our natural bent. How would you finish the sentence? How would you finish? Make my joy complete by. Like, how would you do it? Make my joy complete by doing this project for me. Make my joy complete by sending me more money. That would be great. Make, make my joy complete by giving me more recognition. You, you keep pushing me down. I want more recognition. It, Make my joy complete by making my life easier. What is it that you would say would make your joy complete? I know one thing, what it could be, and that's helping those around you. Helping them, those around you to do well. Helping those around you to live well. Helping those around you to grow in Christ. Helping those around you to build up their relationships, their marriages, their parenting. Helping those around you to experience the fullness of life. And the reason that it makes your joy complete is because you got to be a part of that happening. And you sense that. And you see that they are now thriving in life. And it makes my joy complete. To all the parents and the grandparents, like one of the greatest gifts that you could give to your children is to build them up and to show them their calling to serve and how to lead in that. We have a great story from one of our uh, volunteers here at New Life Church, and we're going to play that video for you. But when that's over, Pastor Kathleen is going to come up here and complete the message, okay? Watch this. My name is Isaac and I've been volunteering here at New Life Church for five years. I've been the lighting lead for about a year now. Lighting lead makes sure that uh, all the lights are programmed, comes in during the week, programs the lights for uh, worship set and message, and uh, comes in during the weekend and just runs lights. He's here all the time. He's here if during the week, about three, four times during the week. Uh, during the weekend, he's here early mornings uh, on Sundays all the way till the last person probably leaves from the church. I, I started seeing God's hand work in his life. I started seeing how God started taking him away from the path he was going to towards his way, his path. Since I've been serving for about on lights for about like two, three years. Um, I've got the opportunity to work with uh, Alex Fuller, who does lights for Elevation, Bethel, Hillsong. And I have recently just got accepted to uh, Grand Canyon University to go in one of their programs and uh, study uh, worship arts with an emphasis and media production. It's a lot of steps that come into it while doing lighting and worshiping at the same time because you still have those little breaks in between the songs when you're not touching anything on the board or on the computer and you just have that free couple like two minutes of just all right here we go this is where this is my chance where I get to worship 
all that worship builds you up to hear this message and then it's still just there and you're ready to take on the world. And when I walked in, I seen him worshiping like never before. It was a God moment for me. It was something that I, I mean, I've, I've seen God moments in his life, but the other part of him showing God how much God means to him, it's a lot more than a mom could ever want, could ever expect. Just bring them to church. Bring them to church and, you know, sign them up for things because you never know. You never know what, you know, it's out there for them. You never know what's going to be, you know, it, they're going to be attracted to. And, and it's their calling, you know. They're, they're, they're called to do something. They're called to, to serve God in a certain way, you know. So just bring them to church and get them plugged in. You feel like you're a part of something bigger than yourself. I'm a part of this church. I'm not only just the lighting lead. I'm a part of this church. I'm here to feed myself and feed other people at the same time. I don't know how I did that. I'm rarely the problem. Let's say that. Not never, apparently, but rarely I am, I am the problem. But I will, I will take that one. I will take one for the team. Hi, how's everybody doing? So I just want to... I want to reiterate, did you guys catch what Pastor James was saying in that video announcement? Because I want to tell you a little bit about the difference of this life group launch. Because normally when we do a life group launch, we ask people to sign up to, to lead a group. Um, and we have various different groups. You know, there's different Bible studies or there's different uh, affinity groups or different things like that. This one's different. Hear this. This one's different. Because this one is four weeks. Everybody say four weeks. It's not your whole life. It's just four weeks. And what we want is for multiple individuals to sign up. That would be you. Multiple individuals to sign up to say, hey, I'll grab my neighbors. I'll grab my co-workers. I'll grab my family. And I'm going to bring them into my house. And you don't have to do nothing except just be there and open your doors. Because all of your four lessons, four lessons are going to be provided by us. We got together with our, with our senior pastor and our campus pastors. And we went through our mission statement, which is, repeat with me, ready? No God. What? Say it again. No God. You were the only one, stud. You were awesome. Uh, be restored. Uncover purpose. Live sent. So we're going to go through. So the campus pastors all went through talking through how we came to know God and be restored and uncover purpose and love sent. And then you guys are just going to answer the same question. So it really leads you through that. So listen. We want all of you to make sure that you sign up to do that because we really want to have everybody have the opportunity to go through that. It's going to be super, super good. It's going to be really interesting. So I challenge you today to make sure you sign up, sign up, sign up. All right. We ready? All right. By the way, waiting for you on the other side of that decision is joy. We're talking about happiness today. We're talking about how to try, try how to find true and real happiness. And on the other side of a sign up to serve people is always happiness every single time. So I just want to say that. So I want, I want us to think through, and we're going to kind of continue looking at the life of Paul, and we're going to think through life. I want to, I, I want to shift our perspective a little bit because... We tend to think through life from the perspective of how does my life or my decisions or my actions affect this day or this, this, this season that I'm in or, or whatever. And we kind of look at those things. But listen, I want you to just pause and, and give yourself the space, right, to start thinking through life from the perspective of how is my life and the choices that I'm making and the things that I'm doing affecting eternity. Not just your eternity, but that's a huge part of it, but the eternity of those around you. Because guys, this part of life is so small. It's just so small. It's, 
It's the life that we are being birthed into, our eternal life, that matters. And so shifting our thoughts from thinking about life in the now to thinking about life in the eternal is is the place where we really do start to find true joy and true happiness. It is the road less traveled that Joe was talking about. So we're going to we're going to go to the next point of the of the road less traveled. Are you guys ready with your outline there? The next part, the second way that you can take the road less traveled to happiness is to find happiness in sacrificial living. To find happiness in sacrificial living. In verse 14, Paul says this, but even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I'm glad and rejoice with all of you. I want you to hear what he's saying. I want you to hear what he's saying because we've mentioned this before, but pay attention to this because this is important. Paul is in prison when he's writing this. When he's writing this letter to the Philippians, to the people of Philippi, he is saying to them, listen to it, even if I am poured out even if I am poured out, that means if I give my all, even to the point of death, because he did not know yet as he sat in that prison, what his ultimate uh, punishment was going to be. Was he going to be flogged? Was he going to be released? Was he going to be stoned to death? He didn't know. And here's what he says, but even, but even if I'm poured out, I'm glad and I rejoice. What? Who says that? Who says that? Even if I am poured out, even if I lose my life, I'm glad and I rejoice. Why? Because his eyes were not on the temporal, which is where we tend to go. It just is. That is not where his eyes were. His eyes were on the eternal. And what he was saying was, but I've invested in you and I've invested in you and I've invested in you and I see a difference in your life because of what I have been able to do. And that's worth it to me. In that, I find joy. In that. Because look, here's the deal. Paul had two options. He could either look at, this is the life that I've lived for Christ, and I've been arrested, I've been beaten, I've had all of these things happen to me, I've been rejected by so many people, I've been accused of so many things, I've had to run for my life in many, many occasions. If I had not followed Christ... This would have been easier and this would have been easier. I could have just got married and settled down with the little missus and had a few kids and had a couple of pets and life would have been. But Paul didn't look at life like that. That was an option, but he didn't choose that one. He chose to look at his life from the perspective of eternity. And here's what he said. I know, I know that because of what I've done, on the other side of this life, when I enter into my life eternal, I'm going to have affected the lives of many people. I'm going to be able to look people in the eye on heaven's side and go, I was a part of your life and I was a part of your life and I was a part of this life and they said this to this person and that person encouraged this person and that person made a difference in this life and that person made a difference in their life and now I'm looking you in the eye and look at, if I would have never done this, it wouldn't have ended up with this person here. He had his eyes, does that make sense? He had his eyes on the eternal and that is the path that he chose to do. Self-evaluate, self-evaluate. What do we want to do? What do we want to do? We want to live that life of joy. We want to live that life of joy. I just got a signal that I clicked. And I even tried to adjust my microphone. It didn't work. But I had really cute earrings on, and I really wanted to wear them. But you guys can see these earrings on this side. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What does it mean? I want, I want to just, I, I want to make you think about it for a second. What does it mean? What does it mean to live a life that is that is enriched and changed and brings joy because you're serving other people. If you are a parent or if you've been around parents, you've seen it. You've seen it. You've walked it. Look, because this, this is how it goes down. When you have a baby in your house and that baby is crying for a bottle in the middle of the night, do we go, eh, I don't feel like doing that. No, we get up and feed the baby. Sometimes with absolute joy because we really want to hold him and rock him. Sometimes not with absolute joy because we really want to be asleep. But in the end, it's worth it, right? In the end, it's worth it. When you have, um, when you have your, your, your little one that needs to go to the doctor, but the only money that you have left to pay for that doctor is the money that you set aside for a date night or a new outfit, 
Are you going to spend the money on the new outfit or are you going to take the kid to the doctor? If any of you said anything different, don't say nothing or I will come off this stage. I'm telling you right now. But we're going to do that. And, and we're not even going to consider that a sacrifice because we love them enough that it's worth it no matter what, right? Right? When your kids get into high school and they start playing all their sports and you are used to spending your evenings and your weekends how you want, but now you're spending your evenings and your weekends in the gym, right? Is it, she, she laughs. Yes. Is it worth it? Although, can I just say, can I just say, one year, Jessica did swim. If you, those of you who do swim, God love you. I love you. You're amazing. You're wonderful. But here's the reality for the rest of us. When we are watching swim, we sit there for two and a half hours to watch you do a 20-second race. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We are sacrificing. We are sacrificing. But it's, why do we do it? It's natural to do it because of our love for that individual. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. I started praying a long time ago for God to teach me how to love people the way that he loves people and how to see people the way that he sees people. And now, however much time I give up in the course of the week doing counseling or hospital visits or whatever, all the things, it's so worth every second of it. It brings me a joy that is beyond anything I could do if I was just doing my thing. It is joy. And if I did not tell you that, I would be missing out as your pastor. If you are not serving, listen to me, if you are not serving, if you're coming in every Sunday and going out and going home and you're doing nothing in between, you're not serving and making a difference in the lives of others. I'm telling you, you are missing out on your greatest life's joys. You are missing it. You're missing it. And I want you guys to know that because I mean it. It is for real. And it's not just the pastors who come in and do things. It's not just that. It's everybody who does everything on this campus. So let's recognize a couple. All you guys on the cameras back there and in that sound booth, everybody turn around. Y'all stand up. Everybody wave at those guys. Brett, what time did you get here this morning, friend? 6 a.m. What time did you get out of bed this morning, friend? Don't say, don't say 5.40 or I'll hurt you. 5 o'clock. And if you're a woman, you got it before. I'm just saying. Okay, and then, hey, what time did you get up this morning? 5. 5. Come here, come here, come here, come here. I'm going to show you something. All right. Look, these are our teams, guys. They get up early every Sunday to make things happen. Look at what they're doing right now. Woo -woo! Look at this team. Come on. We got Cody hiding back here. Cody, what time did you get here this morning? 6 a.m. Because he's awesome. Cody, was it worth it? Yes. Why? Because I get to play music and worship in front of everyone. It's amazing. And lead others into yes. worship. Love it. Okay. These are the teams, guys. Being a part of these things, this is what makes the difference. Every single time, it makes the difference. And is it worth it, guys, in the back? Is it worth it? All the way. It is worth it all the way. So let's review. What is the road less traveled on the path to true happiness? Find happiness in building up others. Find happiness in sacrificial living. Find happiness, here's our last one, in showing appreciation, which is what we just did, right? Showing appreciation. But I'm going to show you guys a couple more. Can I show you a couple more? Because I literally have a folder in my house that is full of when I get different notes and I get different letters, I put it in my folder. Things that people have said that they appreciate. I save it because sometimes I need to read them and remind myself of why things are awesome. So I'm going to read you guys a couple. Can I read you one? Look at this one. This one is from a little honey. Can you see it? From a little honey that I taught kids church to years and years and years ago. And let me read what she says to you. She says, Dear Miss Kathleen, there's an A in there. There's a Kathleen, and it's a K, but I will forgive her. You are a great teacher. You have been a good teacher since I ever saw you. Your church kid, Melissa. Come on. That is so cute. And then we have our thanks, and we have our thanks. And this one says... Thank you for the meal that you provided for our family. Honestly, it meant so much. Your prayers, hugs, humor when needed. 
is so appreciated. You are one in a million. This one came from the desk of Pastor James A. Ranger, and apparently we had written him a letter of appreciation. Well, it says Joe. So apparently Joe had written him a letter of appreciation, and it says, wow, what an encouraging letter that you sent me. I'm so proud of you and your family, the way you've been obedient to the leading of God to help bring healing to hurting humanity in Texas. And then he said this, okay, hold on. Do you see it? Give my love to Kathy. Who is that? Because I ain't Kathy. My name is Kathleen. Kathy is my mama. And I don't spell it with a K. It took me years to beat that out of him. I just want you to know it took me a long, long time to get that out of him. But I finally did beat that out of him. And now he calls me Kathleen. And he is so lucky because he gets to live. This one... This one is a Valentine's that, um, that when Jessica was just a little bit over two that we wrote, I asked her, she was just a little tiny bit over two. I said, Jessica, tell me the things that you love about daddy. And so she told me the things that you, she loved about daddy and I wrote it in the card. And she says, what we love about you, I love daddy's smile, daddy's eyes, daddy's arms, daddy's nose. I like it when daddy does like a monster. And then I wrote in, in parentheses, how she usually said it. I like it when daddy does a mustarded. When daddy bees a butterfly, I like to be daddy's baby. I like daddy to be a kitten. And then she says, I don't want to talk anymore. <laughs> she was done. These letters, guys, look, look. If we can pause... And look at the things that we appreciate around us. It's so easy to see the things that are annoying, <laughs> right? Or that needs to be fixed. Find your golden nuggets. Find the things to be appreciated. Write letters. Write notes. Stick post-its on your, on your kids' windows in the morning. Stick post-its on your husband's rearview mirror so when he gets in the car, he sees a post-it that just says, I love this about you find things to appreciate the people around you and you will shift your perspective so quickly and you will bring happiness to the lives of other people and that will bring happiness to your life because it is reciprocal take joy in those things paul taught us over and over and over again how to celebrate the people in ministry with him, how to celebrate. And then he challenged us to do the same thing. So listen, as we wrap this up, we're gonna wrap this up and we're gonna say this. We're gonna go into communion in just a second. So let me share with you one more thought. Philippians 2 contains a lot of really uh, well-known things, but there's one particular section that was, was very likely a hymn uh, during that time in the early church, and it talks about adopting that attitude of, of appreciation and the attitude of Christ. And Paul wrote in verse... Oh, oh. I totally just closed my screen. Here we go. Paul wrote in verses 4 through 5, he said this. Are you guys ready? He says... It's the next one. I skipped you guys. I love y'all. In verses uh, 5 through 11, I said I was messed up. In verses 5 through 11, he says this. Have this mind in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, existing in the form of God, counted not the being on equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. Everybody say humbled himself. Becoming obedient even unto death. Yes, the death of the cross. Therefore also God highly exalted him. Hear this, hear it, hear it. He humbled himself, and then God highly exalted. Did you see the pattern? As he humbled himself, God highly exalted him and gave unto him the name which is above every other name, that in the name of Jesus, everybody say Jesus. Jesus. Every knee should bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under earth and that every tongue should confess that. Say it with me. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Jesus came in flesh, humbled himself, took on the form of a servant, and even from the mouth of Jesus, he said... 
For the Son of Man came to serve, but not to be served. For the Son of Man came to serve, but not to be served. It's actually flipped on that one. The best life you can possibly live, if we really want to live a life of joy and happiness and contentment and fulfillment, it is service. Service to our God, service to others. That is where we find it. That is where we find it. So let me ask you, if you've been a follower for a while, but you're not serving, why? There is an eternity on the other side of this life that counts so much more than all the rest of the stuff we're doing right now. And I know we talk about that scripture that says that when we get to heaven, we want to hear our God say, well done, my good and faithful, what? Servant. If you are not serving, why? What if you're missing out on the conversation of that person that needed to hear your testimony? That needed to hear the lesson that you were going to teach in student life? that needed a meal that was served from your hand that came with your hug in a moment of desperation. The eternal, guys. It's the eternal that counts. If you're not part of investing in the eternal, I am truly saying to you, why? You've got to get in the game, guys. It counts too much. It counts too much. I've had conversations. <laughs> I've had conversations where I've surprised people because they're like, oh, life can be so hard sometimes. I'm just ready for Jesus to come back. And I go, no, not yet. I know too many people that don't know him yet. We got too much to do. Get in the game. Get in the game. It will change the lives of those around you and it will change your life. It will change your life for the better. Don't wait anymore. Don't wait. Grab your connect cards. Just say, I'm interested. I don't even know what. I'm interested. Come to the fast track next week where we can talk through all of the spiritual gift stuff and what that looks like. Come to fast track with us. Get in it. It will change your life and everybody else around you. Get in it.